everybody. It's Christine Stitch All The Things. Um, back with Floss Tube number 21, Stitchy Update. Um, today is April 11th. Uh, by the time this goes up, I'm thinking it's going to be tomorrow, April 12th, uh, Thursday. Um, I want to welcome you to my channel. If you're new and if you're returning, thank you for coming back, wanting to hang out with me and spend some time with me today. Um, I appreciate that. Um, you all are such an encouragement to me um, to keep these videos going. And um, I just, I appreciate all your kind comments and um, I appreciate that you come back to watch. Um, I have some thanks to give. I, um, I have been, as you know, every week I try to catch up more on Floss Tube, and I have been so far behind on people that I'm, I'm, I've been struggling trying to catch up, and my watch later list has felt a little overwhelming. Um, I think last time I said there was 110. Um, there are now 77 in the watch later list, or 72. I think I got it down there, and I found a way to. Uh, make it feel a little less overwhelming. Um, what I've decided to do is when um, people that I'm current and caught up with post a video, I watch it um, in the same week that it gets posted. That way, at least that's my plan. That way I stay up to date with the people that I'm already caught up with. Um, and then my goal is um, for, for the week is to watch two new to me people or people I'm behind on. Um, and get caught up with their stuff. And I'm only watching uh, 2018 videos. So I start in January and then um, try to catch up. Now, uh, one channel I was behind on, and there's no reason for this, zero reason, um, was Priscilla and Chelsea, uh, the Real Housewives of Cross Stitch. <laughs> their videos are like 20, 30 minutes long at the most. Um, there is no reason I should have been so far behind on them, but I was. Um, and so then I spent some time with them um, this past week and I caught up with them and they had given me a shout out. I can't tell you about my fangirl moment when that happened. Um, it was, I just was like, oh my gosh, over the moon, excited. And so Priscilla and Chelsea, thank you for that. But not just thank you for watching my channel and mentioning me. Thank you for what you do for the floss tube and cross stitching community. Thank you for your encouraging videos showing people that it's really easy to make their cross stitch piece, pieces into beautiful finishes. Um, thank you for sharing your techniques with us. Um, I just, the time that, that you take to write your blog posts, um, you, you give us the information, you help us with all we need to know with that. Um, you make the finishing seem less intimidating to make it so nice and so fun. And so I appreciate both of you so much sharing that, sharing your talent with us. Um, you're just amazing and thank you. Um, and thank you for the stitch alongs that you host because those are fun. I've not been able to participate yet, but that's just because I have so much going on. But I love watching everybody um, posting and uh, participating in those stitch alongs. Those are fun. And then the other person that I spent some time with this past week was Abby, Top Knot Stitcher. She is amazing to watch. I love Oscar Pepper. Um, give him some pets for me, Abby. Um, and she also just got a sewing machine, so she's practicing her sewing. And you know I'm all like gung-ho for that. Um, that's awesome. And then I think, I can't remember, um, but I think Tiffin Stitches actually may have mentioned my channel. Um, I don't know, maybe it's wishful thinking, but, um, Tiffany, if you mention my channel, thank you. And if you didn't, <laughs> just know that I guess I wish you did. I don't know. <laughs> I'm such an idiot sometimes. Um, anyway, if anybody else did and I watched your video and I said thank you there and I forgot here, please know that it's just, it's just my brain. I forget stuff all the time. And I wrote notes, people. I have notes and I still forget stuff. Um, so thank you to you, uh, to all three of you, um, and anyone else who has mentioned my channel. Um, I, I, I guess it's not the right thing to say shout outs anymore. Um, but I choose to think of it as spending time with you anyway. Um, and so these are the other people that I spent time with this week. 
um, and I completely enjoyed it. Please know that floss tube for me is just a wonderful encouragement. Anybody I watch, I just, um, I appreciate you. I, I enjoy my stitching so much more. I feel like I'm stitching with friends. And I also have been enjoying watching the relationships foster between various floss tubers. Like um, how much um, Julie of Gulf Coast Stitches and Tiffany um, of Tiffin Stitches, I just, how much they love, love to, to interact and talk with each other and see that friendship develop. And Tiffin Stitches and Kellyanne, um, watching that, um, through their floss tubes and I just, I love it. Um, I love watching Ginger Gerald Stitcher interact with, um, Caroline and, um, see how much he and Yvonne and Caroline, they all mention each other because they just are enjoying the very, I say various crafts in their case because of the knitting and stuff. It's wonderful to see the community encourage and inspire each other. Um, and for those of you who message me, um, interact with me here, anywhere else, all of you, please know that you inspire and encourage me, and I appreciate that. Um, these are the people I spend time with. Now, on Monday mornings, I spend time with Pam and Steph. They are the reason I get out of bed on a Monday morning and get on the treadmill. Because I have to tell you, that day, Monday morning, I, I don't want to get out of bed or get on the treadmill. Um, I am a sleep in person. I love my sleep. I stay up really late at night and I want to sleep in in the morning. I want to get, I get up early to tell the kids goodbye, have a good day every single day. And then I want to go back to bed. But when I know that Pam and Steph have a video up and I get to go watch it, um, the hour that I spend on the human hamster wheel, it goes by like that. Um, so Pam and Steph, I thank you so much for your videos, for the laughter, because I swear to you, you guys, I am the biggest klutz. There have been times I've actually had to stop. Anyway, um, I have had to stop the treadmill so from laughing so hard so I don't fall off. Uh, yeah. So, um, yeah, they're my Monday morning girls. They don't know it, but they're like, they're the reason I get out of bed and on the treadmill. I know that I can endure that first hour of the week because I'm hanging out with Pam and stuff. Um, let's see. I spent time with uh, Donna Ray this week, Flannel Jammies Farm. Um, she just is uh, like the opposite of me as far as her poise and how calming and um, elegant, elegant, classy all those words go with Donna Ray and just so encouraging. I love that she shares all of her beekeeping adventures with us, um, her homesteading adventures. Donna Ray, thank you for those. Um, oh, and thank you for the ironing lesson too. As a quilter, um, I iron the complete opposite. I don't iron, I press, um, of the way that, um, that, um, uh, your video showed and I'm sorry I I forgot her name I want to say Pat um, I hope that's right I don't know but that was very interesting and I appreciate that you and she both took the time to share that um, let's see homesteading on the home front um, absolutely love Lynette and the girls um, eldest and little one and seeing their adventures in Guam um, their stitching. I love how little one is influencing her own classmates to stitch. I mean, yes, let's please pass this craft on and share it with, um, our friends. I, I think it's wonderful. Um, lollipop stitches. Lolly. I love you, girl. Um, spent time with Lolly. Um, I'm, I'm trying to read my notes and you know, you notice my glasses aren't on, right? Oh, Lolly did a, a quilt. I love your quilt, Lolly. Love it. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I was so excited when I saw that. Um, yeah, and your eye cross stitch piece, so I don't kill people, that fabric you chose was amazing. Spent time with Kellyanne this week, um, and she's doing the laundry series by Hands On Design, I think. Love that. Really can't wait to see how that turns out. Um, spent time with Gerald this week. Um, you guys, he sewed pillows by hand like smalls though but still he sewed them by hand by hand he didn't use a sewing machine 
Gerald, you got mad skills because his seam was so tight. I thought it looked sewn by a sewing machine and that's not an insult. It means that his stitches were so good. Um, he didn't have bits of fluff peeping through. You guys need to go see that. And also he's got a new pattern out. Please check that out. Um, and he's doing a new series as well. Oh, new in the cro um, cross stitching world. Gerald's doing confessions of a floss tuber or floss tubers. Um, a new series, um, just chatting, interacting, um, interviewing, but like casual conversation with various floss tubers out there. So, um, the first one, Minty Stitcher, Minty Stitches, Mindy, um, she, she's, um, one he just did the, the confessions with, I think it's going to come out once every two weeks, go check out his channel. And you know, I'm going to link everyone below. Cause I really hope that you guys will go check them out and spend some time with them too. Um, let's see, of course, Tiffin Stitches, I mentioned her, caught up with her. Um, she got the Victorian Motto Sampler Hall of all hauls. I could just watch that video on repeat. Yeah, because I love those flosses. So go check her out. Um, and I mentioned Abby Topknot Stitcher. Um, let's see. Oh, Abby finished this gorgeous um, Ink Circles Chalkboard Mandala. And she has a wonderful piece that she wants to um, finish it and, and have it hang with. Um, definitely go check out her videos because that's just amazing. Spent time with Jan Hicks. Um, she's doing a great piece. It is, did I write it down? The Bay piece, Harbor Bay. I can't remember. Um, but every time I see that piece, I'm just blown away by the detail and how amazing it is. And there is a brand new floss tuber out. Um, and she comments on my floss tube videos all the time. She's so sweet, so encouraging. Um, her name, her floss tube name is Love Music. I think it's Isho. Um, Isho, I'm not sure. I-S-H-O. Uh, correct me on pronunciation, please. Um, she's she's had a few other videos out. She crochets. She does some planner um, videos and things like that. Um, she's from Canada. And she, her very first floss tube video shows you how to, um, uh, you stitch with water soluble canvas, not how to stitch with it because her stitching piece is done and it's spectacular, different motifs that she just put together. And it's how to get the water soluble canvas off once you're done stitching. Um, she does that right in her vid video as she's introducing herself. So that was really, really great. Um, and I, I really appreciate that. Um, so those are the people I spent time with this week. Um, I have a huge list. I have many more people I want to spend time with, um, uh, amongst the usuals. So, um, thank you for everything that you, that you guys do to contribute to the community. Even just sharing your stitching, you inspire me, you, um, enable me way too much with purchases. Um, so I appreciate you. Okay. Um, let's see. I'm going to get into my stitching. Um, I had a new start and a finish on, oh no, I was gonna, I was going to um, censor this piece cause it's my Mermaid Tales stitch along. And if you follow me on Instagram, you know that um, I have I have a picture there and the first picture in a, in a series is a censored piece. And then if you swipe, um, you can see the uncensored piece. And I promised you guys that I wouldn't show you the uncensored piece. So I'm going to pause um, and then I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to censor that piece and then start in just a second. So hang on. Be um, right back. The Mermaid Tales Stitch Along is by Pe Peacock and Fig. And this is one of four parts that came out. And trying to sorry I'm really I'm really still trying to get used to this camera and if I focus I have to auto focus on my own here and I hope that I get it okay all right so the PG version of this piece says my bum is cold from sitting on this terrible rock um, and that's all I'm gonna say about that um, this was a fun stitch it took me about seven days there is um, beads all in the border um, beads in her hair. This is all DMC except for, and I don't know how well you can see, uh, see if I can get, 
oops, focus in just a bit more. Um, the Krynik in this is the, I looked up how to say this on the internet because the internet knows everything, right? Um, and it's this word, umber, umbre, ombre, is actually the definition I kept coming across was a card game. Yeah. And one of the, um, like the Merriam Webster, I think, called it umber, not umber, umber. So I don't know how you say that word. So I'm just going to spell it out. O-M-B-R-E. Um, it's this from Krynik and it looks like I'm going to try to focus in again. Um, this stuff is difficult to work with. It's great. It's sparkly. It goes from silver to purple to pink, but the ends sorry while I go back and forth it doesn't autofocus I have to do it so it just takes a minute when you cut this I, I have to put my glasses on so I can see what you're seeing um, you can see the end here here we go with focusing again um, I don't know if you could see how that is it's oops, frayed and the more you work with this stuff the more it frays and like pulls. I'm going to cut off a piece and show you. Sorry for the blurry while I do this. As you pull it through your fabric, it sort of kinks up on itself. Um, some of that silver you could see right here, it'll kink up as you pull through. And I, you have to use this for some of the back stitching. And the longer you use it, the more and more it frays. And there's like 12 strands of stuff in here. Okay. So I, I mentioned something about it on the Peacock and Fig group and Dana, who is Peacock and Fig, she is amazing. She promptly responds to any comments. I mentioned that I was having trouble doing, doing this with the, the Krynik, Um and she mentioned a thread lubricant. Now I stopped using thread heaven a while ago because no matter how softly I ran it across um, any thread across, I always picked up teeny tiny balls of, of the silicone stuff on my threads and I don't wash my pieces when I'm done. So I got tired of dealing with those or seeing them. So I stopped using it, but I thought, okay, I'm going to try it with this. Um, cause it's not braided tight. Like you would think it's just wrapped. Um, so what I do is as I'm stitching with this, this is my tip for you. If you end up using this stuff, when I stitch with it, I switched my needle. Normally I use a 26 petite uh, tapestry needle. I grabbed the, the biggest tapestry needle I could find because I'm using even weave and the, the threads will part for the needle and then go back. Um, I used a 22, size 22 tapestry needle. Man, that thing is huge compared to my 26 petite. And um, that helps. What it does when you use that bigger needle, the eye of the needle, will open your threads up on your even weaves, linens, enough so that you can pull through the thread without putting too much friction on it. And then when she suggested the thread heaven, I thought, okay, I'll run a tiny bit over that. And so that helped a lot too. I still would get some bunching up. I'd still get this on both, you know, separating so much so that by, by the time I was getting uh, and I cut my pieces nine to 10 inches long, no longer, um, because the longer you mess with it, the more this all untwists. And then all of a sudden you've got 12 pieces of separate strands. So also what I would do is I would twist my needle to twist them back around each other. So that's my tip. If you end up working with this Krynik Ombre, bigger needle, um, if you're using Ada, know that the bigger needle will pop your holes bigger and leave them bigger. Um, yeah, just something to keep in mind. You may not care um, if it's, you know, holes that you're putting uh, more um, stitches around anyway. So what's it going to matter other than just be aware, don't pull your stitches tight so that it, they, you don't make a, like an eyelet on accident. Um, thread heaven, bigger needle, cut your lengths short because by the time this is done and completely frayed on the ends and you need a new piece, you're done at about nine inches. 
So FYI, for the Krynic Umber, Umbre, however you want to say that, flosses. So that's my finish. And I, you know what? I will put a picture of the uncensored version at the very end of the video, um, right before the, the final screen, but I will put a warning on it before. Like I'll put a, a little, um, page warning that, you know, I'm going to show this picture. So, um, just look at the end of the video. If you want to see what the words say, um, uncensored, I'm sure you can figure it out, but um, also this actually the words came with punctuation French knots um, or beads and the only beads I had that match were awkward a um, little too big um, I talked to Dana because she is like I said amazing about responding I mentioned the comment about um, how I felt about French knots and she um, gave some tips and linked to a post on help for French knots. I used to be amazing with French knots and that that's my biggest complaint is when I was doing embroidery, I had French knots down. Um, and she mentioned something that made me realize what my problem was and I need to practice. I haven't practiced them, but then by the next video I will, and I will tell you if my thought was right on what the issue is. And if it is, uh, maybe a lot of you, may all of a sudden be able to do French knots with zero problems. I will talk about that in another video. I got to test my theory first and make sure I'm right. Um, okay. After that was finished, this I wasn't even supposed to do. I was supposed to do my um, Santa's village, but that released and I said, that's it. I got to do that. So I ended up doing, oops, Santa's village. I have the pattern on here, but I ended up doing it ugh, late. Um, but I'm, I am working on it. My girl's upside down. This is the Santa Sleigh Works house. Oops. <laughs> okay. Let's see if I can get this to focus in a little bit better. Um, hopefully not too blurry. Um, I have got all of the house finished, except I need to do the lights inside. So just yellow in the windows. Um, I need to do the snow all along the bottom here. Um, I need the Santa sled here and then, um, the snowflakes and then this piece will be done. Um, and I'm super happy because, um, right up here where there's some snowflakes here, but because I'm using the, the, um, reindeer button in this area, which I don't have with me right now, I don't have to stitch two of the snowflakes. I'm so happy. I only have to stitch like four, maybe maybe five, I think four snowflakes. That makes me so happy. Um, yeah, those snowflakes, they are not my favorite at all. Um, and so my plans, as far as my stitching goes, are to finish Santa's Village. Um, I'm actually, not finish Santa's Village, finish Santa's Sleigh Works. Um, that was supposed to be done in March. I'm working on my March um, building. So I am my, I look blurry, but maybe it's because I just don't have my glasses on. I don't know. I hope this doesn't look fuzzy. Um, okay. Santa sleigh works was supposed to be done in March. I did not start it until April. Uh, so my plans are to finish Santa sleigh works and go straight into the next, um, uh, cottage in Santa's village and get April done. I am so anxious to get back to um, my Chatelaine, but I don't want to get behind in the, my own commitment to myself to get certain like stitch alongs done every month. Um, and that leads me into mania plans. I do not have big mania plans at all. I actually wasn't even going to participate. Um, and then I saw Dina's video of, um, half stitch cross stitch. Oh, I spent time with Dina. Love Dina. Um, I know I've mentioned that before, but she's just so sweet. Um, and her plans for mania. I'm not going to go over them exactly. You, you should go watch a video cause she's got some, some, um, great pieces she's thinking of working on and a good idea, a good plan. But basically it was not to have new starts, but to commit time during the 18 days to, um, particular whips. And mine is to get caught up on the prickly, but cute stitch along. I, I believe that I have seven or eight to get caught up on. 
uh, eight little cacti succulents. Um, and so I want to dedicate two days to each one and then um, the any days I have left, if I have any left, to finishing the border. Um, and those are my mania plans. That's it. Nothing big. I didn't pull out any new starts because I've already started um, the stitch alongs, two stitch alongs, the mermaid one, the um, prickly but cute. I wasn't even going to do stitch alongs this year. So I want to get those that done. And then for May, um, I don't even know if I'll end up having time to work on my Chatelaine, which is disappointing. Um, but I really want to get Santa's Village done. Um, so we'll see if I get to work on my Chatelaine at all in May. Um, I will have Prickly But Cute for the first 18 days. Um, I will have um, the, the next mermaid to do and one more of the Santa's Village to do. So maybe no Chatelaine in May. So for April, I want to do the rest of this month, finish Santa's Sleigh Works, do the next cottage, I forgot what it is in Santa's Village, and then Chatelaine. Um, I'm super excited to get back to that. So that's my stitching stuff. Um, I'm going to talk about some haul and stitchy kindness next. Stitchy kindness first. Um, this actually came in the same day of my last video where I mentioned I had some stitchy kindness um, from Gibbs Girl Stitches. Thank you again. Oh, that reminds me, I have the giveaway to do. I will do a video right after this one, a short one of the giveaway for that um, because she gave me that wonderful grime guard and the amazing um, sugar skull uh, minder that's up there that you can't see. Um, but the same day, I received some stitchy kindness from an Instagram friend who is so encouraging, so sweet. Um, she sends me great little messages. We chat back and forth in private message. Um, and she commented on, I, I had a piece, I can't remember which picture it was, but it had my um, FUBAR needle minder on it. And someone said, holy S balls, um, I love, I need that minder or something. And then I was like, yeah, I know, cause I love it too. And then I said, I need a minder that says S balls on it. And so she got me one. I'm gonna censor it a little bit. She made it for me. And she also sent me another minder. So first off, she sends it in this cute little bag and a post-it note, open me. I'm saving this post-it note forever. It's gonna be hanging up around here somewhere. And I love this bag. It is going to be one of my little accessory bags to go in my stitching stuff. Um, thank you for this, Jen. Totally love it. Uh, look at the colors. You know I love it. It's a beautiful card. Love that and an awesome note inside. Very encouraging. Thank you. But here's the needle minder she gave me. She made me this one. It's a bottle cap and it says, the whole word, but I'm trying to get it to where um, you, you're you not seeing, you know, I'm censoring it for people who don't like that kind of stuff, but I love it. And I'm using this needle minder on my, um, my mermaid tails piece. I actually started using it before I even showed it on floss tube. So I think that breaks the rules, but I wasn't gonna wait. And the other one is the initial C. So I'm going to see if I can focus in, there we go. So yeah. Um, I love this handmade needle minder. I love that I have her handwriting. Um, I don't know why, but I really love handwritten things in people's own handwriting. I think that makes things extra special. Um, so Jen, Jennifer, thank you. Thank you so much for the wonderful card, the bag, the minders. I love them. That one is my favorite. And now I have a minder that says S balls. Um, yes, yes, please. And thank you. Um, something I got in today and I did not. I didn't expect this at all. I got something from Amy Loves Toads. Thank you so much, Amy. When you see this, you guys are gonna die. First off, she gives me this, she sends me this postcard with a wonderful um, handwritten letter on the back or a handwritten note. And this is a black sea devil. I know that because it says it on the back of the postcard, but I love it. Look at those teeth. Can you see that? Yeah, I love this. Okay, and if you hear the tapping, I'm sorry, I'm using my touch 
notepad and I'm trying to be quiet, but I don't know. This was in the package. Could you just, I'm, I could just pass out from the awesomeness. I probably screamed when I got this. Pretty sure I did. Um, look at that squirrel. It's the evil ear squirrel. Do you remember, um, I showed ghoul last week, I think, and it has those ears, those squirrel ears. I could just die. And the crow or raven, whatever, I'm going to call him a crow. And the jack-o'-lantern down there. It's just perfect. And look at this Rick Rack. She did Rick Rack. And that's not all. That spider fabric. And this, her little Amy Loves Toads, the frog tag. <gasps> I just, I don't even know. I don't even know what you say to someone who takes the time to stitch something like this for you. And I don't even know what count fabric this is, but it looks tiny. Sorry, I had like a little gnat in here or something. Like, I, I can't even see it without my glasses. This has to be, I don't know, Amy, you can correct me. What, 36, 40 count? It's tiny, the tiny fabric. I just, Amy, thank you. And that's not all. She gave me this awesome, awesome floss. Weeks Dye Works in Jack-O-Lantern. The black and the orange variegated floss rocks my world. Rocks my world. And I'm blurry. Say it again. Rocks my world. Amy, thank you so much. This means so much to me. Love the card. Love the floss. I don't understand. Just the generosity and kindness of everyone. I, I shouldn't say I don't understand. It's just, it's so wonderful to be a recipient of such kindness and generosity and really stitchy love. Um, thank you so much, Jennifer. Thank you so much, Amy. Um, I thank you again, um, Angela, for um, all of your guys's just the kindness that you've shown me for, for I don't want to say no reason, but... Uh, all of you who receive stitchy kindness, you know, right? You know what I'm trying to say. It's just, it blows me away. And it, it doesn't blow me away that people are generous and kind. It's just that it's for me, I think. I think it's just that it's for me. And so thank you. This is rocks my world. Rocks my ever-loving world right there. It has to go up on my... It's just the best thing ever. Oh my gosh. And needle minders, best thing ever. Handmade, written in your own handwriting, needle minders. And sugar skull needle minders. People, just all the things I love. I forgot one person, and I cannot even believe I forgot this, um, for stitchy kindness. Um, I really have been blessed um, with all of your comments, your friendship, your messages. Um, and I have really enjoyed chatting with uh, Lisa from Lisa Stitching Stables. And she surprised me this past week with a wonderful package. Um, she sent me a beautiful card with a butterfly on it. Love butterflies. And she picked up on that in one of my last videos. So not only did she send me a card with a butterfly on it, she sent me this chime with a butterfly on it. I've been dying to hang these up outside my kitchen window, but I've been waiting for um, to get this video done. And then I couldn't believe I forgot to include it in the first part. So this is being like interjected. Hopefully it'll be a smooth interjection in the video. Um, but yeah, love this butterfly. Um, and it sounds pretty too. And not just that, she sent me this one as well. So gorgeous. Um, the light is just going to catch this so beautifully. And right here, the wings. I, thank you so much, Lisa, for your generosity, for your friendship, for your kindness, for finding these butterflies and sending them to me. Um, and not only did she send me the butterflies, she knows I like buttons too. And so she either sent me all or some of her Just Another Button Company subscription 
for, I'm not sure if this was March or April, but she sent me a smoothie pack. Um, and the camera doesn't, this app I'm using right now doesn't focus, so I can't get it to focus any better than that. But this is um, Rose from uh, the smoothie pack. This is Lemonade Buttons. And they have cute, cute spring buttons in here. Flowers, birds, just adorable. And this little um, Lemon Drop Sprinkles Pack. Just such adorable buttons. I love me some buttons so much. Um, so thank you so much, Lisa, for the stitchy kindness, for your friendship, for messaging me. Um, I've not been really good at messaging back lately. Um, and maybe you'll understand why with all the project bags going on and me just needing to, to get those focused. Um, focus on those and try to get those done. But anyway, I appreciate so much your friendship and your generosity. Um, thank you very much. Okay. Uh, moving on. Let's see. Um, I have a pretty previous video up, um, speaking about my progress and things that I've been doing. Um, I made some progress, but project bags for sale. They're going to go up on my Instagram on Friday. Um, and go watch the the previous video towards the end gives you uh all the details prices um when it's gonna go up um but before that shows talks a lot about um what the bags are constructed of uh from um what can fit in them as far as q snaps sizes and stuff like that that's pretty much what the video is about so um that's the other thing i've been doing i'm telling you those bags took me forever i did a 35 bag order in I think three and a half weeks, four weeks, maybe these 12 bags took me a month. I'm off my game people. Okay. Um, I, I was sort of in the middle of haul and stitchy kindness when I mentioned other things I've been working on. Okay. This is my haul. I ordered this a while ago off Amazon cross stitch Halloween collection, 2001 to 2011 to 2014. Now I had, uh, when, when you, do a just cross stitch subscription you can get digital or print and if you get print they give you so many years of back issues um, and so when I started this I was able to go back as far um, I, I need to stop and say you don't get the the special edition al annual Halloween issue you have to pay separate for that when I first subscribed then the issues, the digital issues for 2013 and 2014 were still available and they're no longer available. I can't, you can't go on and get them. Um, but that also means that when I was looking to buy 2012 and 2011 annual Halloween collection edition, um, those weren't available either. So I bought this CD uh, from a, a seller on Amazon. I think it was shipped like $24. And I have to tell you, I think the 2011, 12, I think all of these, these issues of the annual Halloween, the special ones you had to pay 10 bucks each for, this is worth it. Um, I love all of these older, the, the patterns that they, they have my, my favorite patterns I think are in the 2014 edition. Um, but there are some in the 2011 and the 2012 that I absolutely loved. And I'm super glad that I spent the money, even though I had 2013 and 14 to get this because I wouldn't have there. Yeah, there are definitely a lot of patterns in here. I want to stitch. Um, and I'll probably go over those one day in a uh, video when I talk about patterns in my stash. I don't know when that's going to be. Have so many plans. Okay, I got my Victorian Motto Sampler threads in for April. And people, these, oh, so me. These are gorgeous. And I'm sure you have seen them in so many other people's videos. But I'm telling you, these colors, just amazing. And probably brighter than what my monitor is coming up with. But... Uh, yeah, this is a gorgeous purple right here. Oops. A beautiful um, gold dust yarrow. 
I think that's how you say that word. Garden Rose. Um, what was this? Easter Special. Uh, pretty Pink Petals. There's some beautiful variegation in that. Use my little focuser thingy-majigger. Yeah. Oh, sorry for the click. I keep, I keep trying to remember not to actually click it. Just use the double tap. Um, this beautiful orange, definitely a, like a muted carrot orange. It's called sweet orange. And this one, best prim purple. I was going to say, did I get one on accident? Um, no. Best prim purple. Love that. Variegation in there. That's all I'm trying to show you. So, yeah, I'm so glad I joined this club. It's absolutely worth it. My color and cotton threads should be here soon, too. I'm super excited to get those in. Um, I also got, um, I believe this is March's fabric, yeah, of the month from Under the Sea Fabrics. Um, Leslie included this great, um, I wish this would really autofocus well. Uh, a paper in it to describe the fabric and tell you the name and oh that it washes out but it's a really beautiful soft peach color yeah I wish I could get more of that in there that may be a little bit more truer um, that's just gorgeous and look at this I did this on accident. I set all these down and when I saw these on top of that, I was like, oh my gosh, that's so beautiful. Uh, yeah. Okay. Patterns. I had to order from Stony Creek. I had to order this, um, Krynik and some of the beads. Uh, so when I did, I can't just order floss and beads and not order a pattern. So I ordered Spooky Hollow. Um, from Lindsay Lane Designs, and let me, Witch and Ghost Make Merry on this last of Dear October Days. Okay, now, this is my favorite thing. Um, this is Arabella Spectre here, and this one over here is I'm a Good Witch. <laughs> I love that. That is awesome. Uh, so yeah, this is my... I just love it. And the fabric too. Um, so that's going to be fun to stitch. I don't have a clue when I'm going to stitch it, but, um, yeah, I, I love that. The next thing I did, I saw on Instagram needle and spoons had this sampler that she just finished and, um, her picture and I will link her Instagram, the picture that she finished. Cause it, it's a lot clearer than this. But she did the Elizabeth Seville um, 1841 sampler. And it is so pretty. Um, let's see if I can. So sorry, guys. While I'm getting used to this camera, please forgive me. Um, I love the sampler. Now, this sampler has a lot of, um, because of it's based off, an, off it's a reproduction. It has um, several parts missing from the border, um, probably moth damage or whatever. I'm, I may stitch, stitch where it should be finished because a lot of parts of the border, the corners, and you can't see it well in this picture, um, they're not finished. And, and that sort of bugs me. Am I breaking some sort of cross stitch rule by wanting to actually have the border complete all the way around? And some of the motifs because like some motifs are completely done and like the one on the other side not quite and I mean you can guess where the stitches or not guess you can see where the stitches should have been in the original when they reproduced it and so, uh, I like the symmetry and I, I think I may be bad I may be breaking some like reproduction sampler rule by actually stitching those missing parts in but I think I'm going to do it anyway. Okay. 
uh, news in the stitching world. If you haven't seen McKenna's videos or um, Instagram posts, McKenna Stitching and Sequins, amazing, amazing person. She is working with The Attic, her local needle workshop in um, Mesa, Phoenix. Same difference, sort of-ish. Uh, anyway, she's working with The Attic. They have a bunch of charts there, older charts they're trying to clear out and get rid of so they can get in new inventory. So McKenna offered to help them by hosting live sales on her um, floss tube, her YouTube channel. And she created a group on Facebook. I will link, you guys know, I link everything below. Uh, so look below in the description box for all of these links. Um, she, they are discounting their stuff half price, 50% off. So um, I was on the first, I was on the, the first live sale and these are the charts I got. Now, I've also claimed some stuff in the group and she just had another live sale last night. I missed that. I, my wallet was probably really grateful. Um, but join that group because the attic has some amazing charts. They've got prairie moons and stuff. She's been able to, um, to people have been claiming those. So you, you, there is no telling what you can find. And there's a lot of things, designers I haven't heard of before. I'm granted, I'm a new stitcher, but, um, there's some amazing things available. Um, and still available um, in the group and she is posting she is just she's not getting any kickbacks no compensation or anything she is doing this of her own on her own free time to help them out and to help us out so McKenna if you are watching thank you girl you are doing amazing thing for the stitching community and for the attic and I swear one of these days I'm gonna get over there because uh, one I want to see you you're amazing um, I may ogle a bit, you know, you know how I feel. Um, and then I want to check out the attic, right? Who doesn't want to go check out the attic? This is what I got from the McKenna's online or live, um, uh, live video, live, um, um, can't call it a D stash. You know what I mean? These are the items I claim. Waxing moon designs. Oops. I'm going to show this one first. August. Um, I got August because it's my birthday month and the blackbird right there is in, in my birthday month. Um, hello. Yes, please. And thank you. Um, this is actually a monthly series, but I just bought my birthday month and I snagged October. Now, when I snagged October, I snagged it because it's October and I love October Halloween, right? It's also Brad's birthday month, <laughs> but I didn't think about that at first because why would I? October. Hello. Um, in, in, in the group on Facebook, I was able to claim um, the three kids' birthday months as well. So March, May, and July. And those are should be on their way to me soon enough. Um, so, yeah. And I may end up getting all of the months if I can and just stitching them all. So I've got one of the months, you know, framed and up somewhere. But... Right now, I just have everybody in my family's birthdays, and so I'm happy about this. Next thing I got was from Samplers Revisited. Um, this is just HB 1867, a reproduction sampler from Northern Germany. Oops, wrong way. Christine, get this down. Talk about being frustrated with yourself. You guys are probably on the other side saying over, over, there. Good. Stop. Uh, yeah. Sorry. And I'm trying to focus at the same time. <sighs> this autofocus that doesn't autofocus drives me crazy. Okay. The next thing I got, and these are super cute, from Blue Ribbon Designs is called Autumn Wishes. And you know I got it right there for that crow and the pumpkin. And of course, autumn and the squirrels, right? The cornucopia. I need to stitch that for Ginger Gerald. I don't know why I think he likes cornucopias. Oh, he did a, um, a cooler, uh, what was her name, book. Anyway, and he liked the cornucopia. Who knows if he likes cornucopias? He probably just liked that one. Gerald, tell me, do you like cornucopias? I don't know. 
Am I even saying it right? Cornucopia? Cornucopia? Why am I wasting Floss 2 video time on that? Okay. I did a thing, you guys. I did a thing. Do you remember in the last video, I was telling y'all how the Brimfield block rocked my world and I didn't need to buy the acrylic templates or anything because I pre-ordered De La Luna, the quilt kit, um, but it's not coming till June. So why would I pre-order the, uh, why would I order the pattern, the templates, or the paper pieces? You remember that, right? Guess what I ordered? The pattern. Yeah. Oh, and when they sent it to me, they sent it to me all wrapped up in this little paper, all taped closed with this um, washi measuring tape. Do you know how much I love that? I love that so much. Um, and there's a reason. There is a method to my madness. I decided I've been talking to Jill a stitch in time. Love Jill. Um, and she ordered the quilt kit as well. She wants to do the Brimfield block too. And so I thought that I would end up doing a, um, a Brimfield block stitch along on my floss tube. Um, and the reason why I thought it might be a good floss tube thing is it's hands, it's English paper piecing. So it's all hand stitching. This is what we do people. We stitch by hand, right? Um, so I thought it might be fun. And even if no one else wants to join in, you don't even have to use the De La Luna fabrics. You could do whatever. But even if people don't want to join in, I thought you guys might might like to see some of the videos of doing um, an English paper pieced quilt. Um, so I thought I would get the pattern to see the different, um, one, how they construct it all together, to see different options for cost um, and how, um, how we can cut costs for some people, some people, okay, let me pause and, and explain. When I bought this quilt pattern, I expected, I fully expected them to have the template shapes, the paper piece shapes in this book for people who can't afford to buy the paper pieces, um, who want to make their own paper pieces. They do not have it in this box, in this, in this um, because if they have the paper piece shape, you can make your own template for cutting out the fabrics to wrap around the paper piece. You have to have a, a little bit of um, over extra on each side, usually a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Some people do quarter inch. That's kind of narrow for me for paper piecing, English paper piecing. Um, so you could end up making your own paper pieces and making your own templates to cut the fabric to go over the paper piece but they don't include any outlines in here. And the way they construct the quilt is that you do every single block with the paper pieces in the block and you put the whole quilt top together before you pull the paper pieces out because you don't leave the paper pieces in there. It, it creates your, um, your block, you make the block um, and then you applique this whole thing down uh, I'm not going to tell you construction method or construction thing, how, how they have you take them all out at the end because they may not like that. But the point is a lot of people reuse their paper pieces because paper pieces can get to be expensive. They're not really, but for some people you're on a budget and, and it can get pricey. So because they, to make this quilt pattern requires that you get the entire paper pieces for the entire quilt. I decided to do that. I was going to get two different blocks worth. And the reason why is when with this block, it gives you two options. You get an option for a block focus. I'm going to go blurry. You get an option for this block where like, uh, this, this template here is, um, two different colors, right? Two different fabrics. And this template here is one solid. So when they send the, <clears throat> so when they send the paper pieces, they send them to where you can split or tear apart. Okay, I don't know how well you can see that the template. 
This is actually a uh, perforation, this line right here. Uh, so, and the templates that they include with this um, have instructions for uh, if you want to make, I'll show you. They call these houses and they have these holes right here. So if you want the bottom part of the house in a different fabric, you would cut here. So you'd have enough fabric to go all around it. And if you want a different fabric <laughs> for, <laughs> I'm still laughing. It's such a comedy of errors, me and this webcam. If you want um, a different color for the top part of the house, these templates are called houses, um, you would use this bottom things and you would cut out fabric to go around this. So at least it's cost saving money because all the templates, which yes, I bought, are dual purpose. You can use, keep this as one solid piece or it's got holes to help you draw lines and stuff for um, doing the pieces in half. Um, and they also have an optional center block if you have fabric that you want to be a focal print. And I bought the paper pieces for that as well. Now, the reason why I went ahead and bought all these now is if I am going to do a stitch along, which I plan on doing, I want to give people options for um, not having to buy the entire paper pack set. Like if you want to buy two blocks worth, and the reason why I say two blocks worth is if you do happen to want to use a set where um, the houses are, you've got a top and a bottom. Well, once you per, you cut the perforation on the paper, you can't put it back together. Well, I guess you could tape it, but you should have one block set for um, per, papers that you tear in half to make the two parts. And you should have one full set of templates for ones that you don't want to tear in half. You want a full piece, which is why I would say buy two blocks worth. So what I did is I bought the whole quilts worth in case my idea won't work on how to do paper piece these blocks in a whole quilt and be able to reuse the paper pieces to make additional blocks. So essentially my plan is to see how I can paper piece one block together um, get the papers out and, and make this block and then do the second block and the third and so on and so forth. Um, does that make sense? But I bought because each block, a paper, the paper pieces for one block, just the block, not the center is $7. Um, so you'd spend $14 on two blocks worth. And I think this whole, the whole thing for the whole quilt was 45. And that may work for some people. Um, they may say, I, I got that, that's not a problem. And I, I'd rather have all the paper pieces, do all the blocks together and get on with my life and not worry about it. But for those who are maybe a little more cost conscious and don't want to put all the money down on an entire quilt's worth of paper pieces, um, I, I'm gonna do some testing. And so, Part of my plans in the next month or two is to test out different ways to to um, make the block with the paper pieces and see if I can reuse them and see how well they hold up before I do a stitch along. So um, I hope you guys like that idea and if anybody's interested, let me know. Um, I will get more details down when the stitch along will start. Probably will be August like the first of August, maybe the end of June. Oh, and the pattern, it does come with like a coloring sheet to help you with um, coloring where you, different colors, where you want your fabrics and stuff um, in the brim fill block. Helps with all that. Uh, so let me know what you think about the um, a brim fill block um, stitch along here on Floss Tube. Um, I think it might be fun. And if anything, I'll just show my progress. And Jill may be the only one stitching along with me. Um, and that may only be as we have time because we're busy and we have lives, right? Okay, this video is long. And the reason it's long is I, I was working on those project bags and I, it just takes up all my time. And we've had some real crazy life stuff going on, which I'm not gonna get into. Um, but I will talk about a bit about um, right now, 
what rocks my world and if you're done uh, I'm done talking about stitching and haul so you can be done and just turn the video off um, and don't forget if you want to see the picture at the end of um, the uncensored version of my mermaid fast forward to the end fast forward to this time here um, okay rocks my world we went last night to the movies to see a quiet place holy crap guys I don't like to go see scary suspenseful movies at the movie theater because I get scared um, I get nightmares um, with certain movies I saw exorcism of Emily Rose I could not sleep for two weeks I swear I could not sleep for two weeks why because I believe that crap's real and so that scared the bejesus out of me I don't think I should say that word talk about that stuff scaring me and then like be taking the Lord's name in vain yeah anyway okay so this movie though a quiet place looked amazing and uh, brad and i decided you know what let's go see that and i told him it should be okay if anything i'll just close my eyes if i can you guys i could not close my eyes in that movie at all i didn't even want to the movie is silent and it's got it's got um you know a musical score and stuff going on in the background um, there are some noises and things um, at appropriate points um, you will jump <laughs> and um, I will say that the movie theater our movie theater actually had a sign on it that said if you're caught talking at all you're gonna get kicked out uh, so we, we were made sure to be really um, silent in the movie theater thank goodness there were only a couple other colors um, <laughs> colors people my husband is blowing kisses at me from the other side of the camera I can't even think right now um there were only like two three other couples in the theater besides us but we were quiet I mean like you didn't even want to eat your popcorn or anything that would make a sound like when I sip soda I try to do it as quietly as possible it's that kind of movie and it is so good so good I actually want to I'm, I'm not this kind of person that wants to go back to the theater and see it again but I do and I honestly think that a theater experience is needed for that movie with the musical score and and the sounds that you see I don't think a home theater system uh, unless you put down big bucks for a home theater system I don't think it would do it justice at all so I would highly recommend that if um, suspenseful movies are your thing that you go see it and it's not gory or anything like that it's PG-13 so definitely go check that movie out the other thing books now I mentioned that I don't do my reading until summer and there's a reason for that I am a voracious reader when I start reading I can't stop um, I love it so much and I'm not an audiobook person because I can't I cannot immerse myself in the story if someone is reading it to me when I read everything around me disappears um, someone could sit down right next to me and if I'm reading I won't even know there's a person next to me and if they're talking I won't even hear them they do not exist right now when I'm reading I am in that world in the book having said that Jan Hicks Jan girl your husband knows how to write a book her she mentioned her husband writes books and he's got two series out um, I think he's got quite a few books quite a few books um, and she mentioned specifically um, the two series he may have a few other books besides these I, I didn't pay much attention to that and I really should um, but she mentioned one the first book in each series is free so um, I'm sorry my phone started ringing I don't even know the number so straight to voicemail you go uh, so I got the first book of the harvest series now my my kind of books are horror suspense thriller mystery um, I really love post-apocalyptic books um, his books his book series I should say the whole series covers all those all of them um, you don't get to post-apocalyptic and that's probably too harsh of a description for what happens but I'm not going to tell you everything because I don't want to give it away um, but yeah it's amazing um, I will say 
I'm really bad at book reviews mainly because I'm like, just go read it. I just said it was good and I, I'm too impatient to explain it to you. Go read it. Um, but basically it even has some alien sci-fi stuff in it, but I'm telling you the aliens aren't like little green men. I mean, it's like, it could be your mama. It could be your boss. It could be your neighbor. Um, it could be anybody. And, uh, basically, um, humanity is fighting for its survival and it all, it all comes down to corn. And if you think I'm eating corn lately, you would be dead wrong. Uh, GMO, genetically modified organisms. Um, that is the running theme of, of the downfall of humanity. Um, but they're all fighters in this book and I'm telling you, it's amazing. Um, I don't even do good descriptions. I will link the book series below. Please go to Amazon, read the description there because it's uh, the authors do an amazing job explaining it. I don't just know that I, I finished the first book, bought the second book, finished the second book, bought the third book. And all that happened within, I think three and a half days. I read a book a day and I think the pages are between 350 and 450 pages, 450 maybe. I, I, I just couldn't stop. I could not put the book series down. I didn't even stitch for like four days and it's all Michael Hicks's fault that I stopped stitching. Um, another book series, actually I, I have my Kindle here, so maybe I can um, just briefly show you the title for, um, uh, right here. Uh, let me, sorry about the reflection. Um, there you go. Season of the harvest, bitter harvest. And what is that? Reaping the harvest. Those are Michael Hicks's books and they're amazing. He has another one, another series in her name series. Um, and it's got quite a few books in that. I want to, I don't even remember how many, at least maybe eight, nine, maybe more. I don't know. I'm not starting to read the first book because I know what to do. I'm just going to want to keep going and I don't have time for that right now. Um, I'm anxious to get to it. Jan, I'm anxious to get to his books. Know that. Um, but I'm waiting for summer and some travel time when I can just read. Um, another one that I did, there's a series by R.R. R. Haywood. It's called Extracted Series. Now this book... I really like this book, definitely a bit sci-fi. Um, someone makes a time machine to go back and save somebody in, in his life. Um, and when one of the people go forward in time to see what happens in the future, there is no future. It's just nothing. So people start going into the past and at the moment of key figures deaths, key figures is um, people who, who and it's it's obviously a fictional history, uh, but people in the history of this book who were really impactful in history, um, they go take three of those people. And these are people like fighters. Um, one is Secret Service um, person in London. Um, they're all English people. Um, the writer is English. Um, and it's a fantastic book. Well, the second, and I didn't know this, but the second book in the series had come out and that was called um, Executed. Um, at some point, these three people have a really obviously difficult time adjusting and they end up hanging out in the Jurassic period. Yeah, so that's a little interesting. Um, but the group dynamic has issues because they don't really have a good leader. And so a person is brought in with a lot of... Um, 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 intelligence, um, secret ops kind of history. And this person like gets the group whipped into, sh into shape and ready to, to try to figure out what happened, what happened to make the world disappear. Uh, and by disappear, I mean, end like just completely gone. I think there was uh, if I remember correctly, like some sort of, um, nuclear, bomb gone off. So their job is to figure out what happened and fix it. And so that is where the third book leaves off. And the third book is called Extinct and it's come out and I'm dying to read it, but I have been so busy. I can't. And I know once I hit read, I, I, I'm done until I've read that. So, um, that was another book I had, I read executed. Um, 
and then a let's see I read three five I read six books in like eight days that's how I get when I read reading just becomes everything um, the other one was by James W Hall I think it was an Amazon first book and it was called when they come for you um, this was a great book a photographer who's married to um, uh, like a <laughs> that stupid gnat um, like a news reporter um, he is killed um, and so she she goes to find out who killed him and his and their son I'm sorry he and her son like a infant son were killed and so um, the book is about her figuring out who killed them uh, and trying to get some payback um, some of it is in South Africa, chocolate plantations, um, some human slavery issues. Um, there, it's not the kind of book that would um, really, well, I shouldn't say that. Um, it's a good book. And um, in this book, her grandfather was uh, like a, a mafia kind of guy. So he helps her out a bit. Uh, so yeah, I really enjoyed that book. Action, adventure, mystery, thriller. Um, and then there's another series um, by A.R. Shaw. It's the Graham series. It's a post-apocalyptic series, basically uh, like a, a flu wipes everyone out. Um, and then there are survivors. There, there's um, a group of survivors who were immune. And then there's a group of survivors who are preppers. And they had planned for this. And so um, the two groups, the, the books go through the two groups being uh, like surviving separately and then how they um, sort of come together um, to work together and then finding out who the culprit is um, and how this started. Um, I thought this series had ended, but she put out a book that was sort of like a, um, a preface to the series and then an update like eight years later. So both of those are like a prequel and a sequel and on your camera, that's probably, I'm probably doing a backwards uh, camera video. Anyway, these are both in a short story kind of book. Um, everybody thought the series was done, but it's not. And I'm really, really glad um, that she's going to continue on with the series. So that was the other book I read, Graham's Resolution. Um, and so that's my book reading. And I don't talk a lot about books because I haven't been reading them. Um, and this is another long video. Um, if you don't like them long, I apologize. Um, I, I really want to try to do at least one video a week so I can keep them around the 45 minute mark. But when I, we've had so much stuff going on here that it's delayed my sewing so much. Um, and that's been my only focus. Uh, when I have a big thing like that of project bags, it really feels like a huge burden to me. And, um, I don't want to say burden, but just pressure, a lot of pressure. And it's all I can focus on. Um, I have many of your comments to respond to on YouTube because I have to shut things out. I can only handle so much before I start feeling really stressed out. So basically my social media comments, responses, emails, um, instant like um, messaging chats, all of that goes away. I do not have the mental, emotional capacity to... Um, work on what's going on in my life, the projects I have with those bags, and handle all that stuff. So um, if you are upset at me being a little distant or not getting back to you right away, I apologize. Please know it's just a bit of self-care that I have to let something go in order to focus on something else. Um, and I think that's important for all of us that when we recognize we're being stressed, um, self-care. Um, yeah. So if you like, well, gosh, you're getting a lot of stitching done, but you don't have time to message me. It's not about that. The stitching is my therapy. It's my stress reliever and the other stuff will come back in time as I, as I get these bags sold and sent out. Um, and then I can get to some fun stuff. Um, my quilting 101 series will go up next week. I haven't recorded the videos. I haven't even wrote a plan out for it yet, but I've got a general idea in my head. Um, and I will... Um, be getting that recorded and up and um, by next week I want to get it started I need to get it started because we need to have fun now that these bags are pretty well done I only have two left I will get them sewn tomorrow we can have fun quilting together um, so I hope you'll watch those if anything just to watch my goofiness because you know there will be goofiness and shenanigans 
Okay, um, I wish you all a happy week. Um, it's half over. It's Wednesday. Um, a Thursday by the time you read this. So have a happy weekend, right? Um, happy, happy everything. Um, <laughs> I don't even know what to say right now. Happy stitching. Whatever your stitching is. Crocheting, knitting, needlework, uh, punch needle, cross stitch. Um, go do it with happiness and joy. Stitch all the things. Bye.